Hey, everybody, and welcome to the weekly Rocksmith live stream. My name is Dan Amrick. I am your community developer, and I'll be your host for this ramshackle puppet show that we call the weekly live stream full of developers here live from San Francisco. Uh, I'm happy to say that this week we have a cold six-pack. Those of you that follow our little clues here and there uh, may have spotted that one. And yeah, you figured it out. It's six songs from Coldplay. We don't normally get to do six songs at a time, uh, but I will let Brian McCune explain that very soon because our first segment is actually a little pre-recorded one because we wanted to get Travis Kindred in here to do the song uh, that he actually helped note track. So... Uh, we are going to play four of those six songs today on the stream. We are going to give away some great prizes from Ernie Ball, as we always do. We're going to give away DLC codes for this content as well from our friend UB Vertigo. He's our community manager, Doug. Hi, Doug. And uh, he will take care of all of your needs for giveaways. Follow his instructions as we go through the hour, and everything will be just fine. Uh, we will kick it off, actually, with a look at all six of those Coldplay songs in our weekly trailer, and then we'll be back with our first song. Thanks for showing up.
Six songs from Coldplay this week. Uh, it's, it's unusual that we would do a six-pack. Maybe Brian McCune, manager of musical contact, uh, content even, mm-hmm. and my contact for m- musical management could, uh, <laughs> could explain why, why do we do six songs. As the minister of Muggle Studies. There we go. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, so a lot, a lot of times when we license songs, we'll ask for like a bunch of songs at once, and then sometimes we'll only get like a handful of them. I mean, that happens actually quite often. Very often. Well, because sometimes, so through an artist's career, they can be on different labels for their, their, their master. Different people might own the masters, different people might own the publishers, and so we may not ever get everything we ask for. And this was a case where we asked for a lot, thinking that we would get a smaller portion. And then when we had six songs, we were like, well, let's just do them all. So that's great. Okay. Uh, yeah, and as and I always say, a six is a good number for a pack of things. That's true, Travis Kindred, note tracker extraordinaire. He and has, if you see Travis, then you know we're, we're recording this uh, in advance. Because it's always nice to have you on the stream. Shucks, I'm just happy to be back. Well, yeah, it's been a while, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, it's, I think it's been like a, this might be my first or second stream of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not much. But you're on because you actually did the note track. I did, I did. For our first song this week, which is? A yellow. Yellow. Um, yeah, so uh, yes. we're doing Coldplay's Yellow. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really fun tune. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think you'll find that the uh, the bass part's pretty. Um, it's pretty simple in terms of like the majority of the song. It's eighth notes. Uh, it's got like a nice little line in the um, in sort of the chorus, and then the guitar part's really like the super fun part, really iconic part of this yeah. song. Sure, I would say both guitar parts are pretty iconic in their own way. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm gonna play the lead. I actually did go through both guitar charts, and I, I might save uh, I might save doing the rhythm one for another another time. You have thoughts? I have thoughts. <laughs> I have things that I want to exp- because that one ha- has a very interesting custom tuning, which is uh, kind of explains Coldplay's unique sound of what they're able to yeah. get out of an acoustic guitar. So maybe we'll discuss that at a later date. But I'm gonna play the lead, uh, okay. which is bendy. Yeah, let's it's play the bendy, bendy lead on Yellow from Coldplay, one of the six <laughs> songs in the Coldplay song pack available mm-hmm. now. Ooh, and, uh, nice stripes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, you know what? There, there are things that we didn't change from last week's 80s show. Yeah. Funny that. Uh, we like to have fun here. Yeah. I, I am not going to wear the garment that that was taken from, by the way. Wow. I'm oh. never going to wear that on the stream. <laughs> that um, was taken from a garment? Is, is no one allowed to wear it? Some of them were, actually. Some of those backgrounds are. Uh, if you have questions, uh, things that you would like to ask, you can chime in on the chat now. We will be giving away an Ernie Ball prize pack after the completion of this song. And you'll get instructions on how to enter that. Bendy. Yeah. So the bass part really is cool. it's the same um, same chords that keep uh, kind of coming around. Mm-hmm. The bass player will shift which octave he plays uh, some of the roots of the chords in. Uh, and it really creates this kind of like wider musical space like here. Do you think that's for variety in listening, or is that for some bases just like to be a little bit more active when they play? Um, I think it's uh, uh, more for the, the prior than the latter. Um, like, I don't think he was bored. I think it was an intentional choice. You know, okay. Like, I love this bass part here. Yeah. Yeah, like the note choices are very intentional. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think... Uh, that bendy part, very fun. You can really hear how wide the sort of uh, tonal texture is when it goes down. Remember, if you need to work on your bends, we have some guitar cage games that'll uh, get your fingers used to doing that. There is a certain amount of uh, muscle memory. I noticed that you just tuned up the G string a little bit. Yeah, you can knock this out of tune pretty easily by bending so much. Well, the G string is also the string that I notice slips the most yep. on any guitar. It doesn't matter what your setup is. 
Uh, so yeah, be aware of that. Don't don't yeah. beat yourself up if it goes out, but put it back in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there are plenty of rests in this song, so there's lots of opportunities to do it. Um, and G strings are always uh, kind of troublesome because they're a little too large to not be wound. Right. Um, but they just don't sound right if they're wound. I mean, you can use a wound G string. You can. It's fine. No hate there, but um, the in, general in sound is days of old. It was actually more common to have a wound G like in the fifties. Yeah. Um, a wound G string. It was also easier to make. I've always wondered. Like I've never tried a wound G on my on my guitars. And I'd, I'd like to just to see tonally or you know physically what the difference feels like. Yeah. And you can buy them as singles too if you just want to try sure. out one. I have one twenty-eight, please. <laughs> That's it. Give me a wound twenty-eight, thank you. Uh, I used to work in a music store, and I would often sell individual strings to people. Wow. Um, and usually someone's like, oh, I broke my high E string. It's like, okay, you should buy it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But some ready. people would come in for you know, One stuff string. like that. Like, oh, I want the lounge key. I want to try it out. You're nailing the bends, Brian. Yeah. As Brian is demonstrating, it helps if you physically bend yourself as well. <laughs> <laughs> But getting those bends spot on is really what gives this song most of its character. That tension that builds and then resolves. Yeah. And if you're playing on an acoustic, it's gonna probably be harder still. Yeah, yeah, those bronze strings, uh, they like bending a little less. Way to manage that musical content, Brian. Yeah, that was a, that was great <laughs> musical content management. Uh, yeah, man, it's a uh, it's a uh, it wears on the f- on the fretting hand for sure. To sure. Do, to hold that many bends uh, for all of those choruses. Um, mm. Yeah, and what I part of the reason I was actually bending my whole body was actually so that I could hear the guitar better because we were uh, the way I have it mixed in my headphones. The game was kind of low, oh, okay. and I needed to. And and a, and a big part of this is making sure that the bends are in tune. So I needed to use my ears. So I was actually trying to get it closer to my <laughs> ear so that I could hear those whole step bends. Because, sure. uh, you know, it's interesting. Like, uh, the whole step bend here on the 7 and 9 where it starts... Can get some... Uh, yeah. So, I mean... there um, You don't have to move your finger that far when you're in the middle of the neck. Right, where I'm 11, 13. Right. But down at two and four, you really have to push it hard. Yeah, and there's a lot more tension since you're a lot closer to the mm-hmm. nut here. The, the nut is actually the name of fret zero. And so there's a lot of tension between that first and fourth fret, so you really have to push it hard. And then it, do, and it doesn't sound good if it's out of tune. So if I'm going like... Yeah. Like, good try! <laughs> because you're actually... All of those bends are whole step <laughs> bends, which means the note that's sounding is two frets above so it's actually like Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's sounds easy sounds easy isn't necessarily easy yeah and difficult to hold and you actually and and getting those bends to go up and down uh at the right times is very iconic as well exactly and i was going to say like that that's actually kind of a uh because this could be played as a single note or as like a unison double stop where you're playing the same note in two different places at the same time yeah um but what's really cool about it is is how the line moves up and down it it builds in all of this interesting tension even though it really is just uh, a whole step motion correct um and that's that bend is so iconic it's a part of this music so a lot of times when you see uh, those oblique bends, or uh, th- that's what they're called, right? Where you're keeping one the same. And you, you can call it that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a lot of times you'll see them on adjacent strings where, for example, it's like I'm on fret 10 on the green string and fret 12 on the orange string. So there are, right now these are a whole step apart, meaning two frets apart. And you tend to bend up to where you're playing the same pitch. And that's how you kind of create an interesting sound. But they've done something entirely different where they're actually... There is a drone open B string throughout all of these. So you have the B ringing throughout, but you're, you're bending. So the 7 9 one here is... So it goes from being a fifth. But you have... Still have it to ground it, yeah. Yeah, so every single one of those intervals has 
something different happening as well. So it's it's really interesting harmonically. And, yeah, and it's a it's it's the iconic uh, guitar texture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. that's absolutely right. And yeah. uh, what's also really fun is um, uh, when when you're doing that, it seems like you're tuning with your eyebrows a bit. Yeah. Just like, uh, 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 uh. It there it is. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to yeah. argue that. Yeah. As, you know. yeah, my mom gave me these big eyebrows for a reason. So. Yeah. Right, so, why, so might as well use Help them. with intonation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both. Yeah. We're going to go comb his eyebrows while you win some stuff from Ernie Ball. I'm going to comb your eyebrows. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> sure. Uh, Ernie Ball has sent us some lovely things uh, to give away to you. Oh, boy, they're already ready for the freeze frame. Uh, we've got a, a nice prize pack of uh, strings. Uh, and and other accessories that you can use as a guitarist. So uh, why don't we why don't we just put them out of their misery and go for that giveaway now? <laughs> Here's a fun bonus. Uh, in addition to everything that you see here, uh, Brian has agreed to let me send out one of his two eyebrows with this prize pack. The other eyebrow will be included in the second prize pack that we give away later in the show. But right now, everything you see here, plus one of Brian's eyebrows, will come to you. Uh, that's a, a strap. That's a peg winder for making your string changes a lot easier. Some brand new strings for both your guitar and your bass. Uh, plus three Rocksmith picks, a dozen picks from Ernie Ball, and uh, the Wonder Wipe system, which is going to keep your guitar nice and shiny and clean and your strings clean so that they last longer. And uh, the fretboard moisturizer is in there as well. So all kinds of fun stuff, plus an eyebrow. Uh, to whoever wins this first raffle, just follow the instructions from our friend Yubi Vertigo in our chat room. He will tell you everything that you need to know to uh, to win. And I would ask that if you win, please send your information right away uh, so that I can get it off of my desk and into the mail room. Uh, for those of you who have been waiting for some of your prizes uh, before, happy to say that uh, they, uh, they're on their way. Uh, we had some problems in the mailroom, and the mailroom problems are slowly uh, working themselves out. So if you've been uh, wondering, hey, where's my January prizes? Uh, probably on their way to you now, so that's good. Uh, and right here now, hello, Arthur. Greetings. Greetings, Arthur Von Nagel, our, uh, one of our producers here on the, the thing, and uh, ex-bassist for Cormorant. Yes. Which I finally figured out how to say the name of the band correctly. Close enough. Yeah. Well, uh, no, still, no, that, still wrong? No, that's it. Don't. Ah! <laughs> and of course, Jason Kokel, he of the wonderful beard. Hi, Jason. Hi. How you doing? I'm great. Okay. What are we playing today? We were playing In My Place. All right. This is one of the six songs in the Coldplay pack. You probably will recognize it if you hear it. Uh, what wonderful things do you have to offer us about this song? I'm guessing you did the note track. I did the note track, yes. Um, well, the, um, the lead path that I'll be playing today is an E standard. Uh, the rhythm path, I believe, has a capo on the second fret. I can't remember exactly, but it has a capo, so if you don't have a capo, I'd stick to the lead. Right. <laughs> and and the, actually, I think the lead in some ways is a little bit easier to play, if I, if I remember correctly. Uh, it has an, uh, a very nice little sort of octaves and seconds like floating uh, part over the chord progression that, that is, uh, it sounds a little bit eerie but pleasant at the same time. So, uh, you know, look, look for that. All right. And you're you're I'm, you're flying blind. Aren't I'm pulling you? a podi. He's pulling a podi. He has not actually played this bass line before, so. but he has been assured that his skill is up to the task. So, <laughs> so good luck. Cool. You have three minutes and fifty seven seconds of I don't know if I can play this no, coming up. A, so that's that's pretty let's wonderful. Do let's do it. <laughs> okay, in my place by Coldplay. Uh, after this song, we will do another giveaway. We'll give away some DLC codes for this content. So if you do like what you're hearing this week, uh, good news. It might be yours free. Uh, if you are a Steam player, and uh, if you're not a Steam player, maybe this will inspire you to go get the Steam version, since we're going to give you free DLC for it. You know, that's nice. I'll take a peek at the chat room, too, and see if I can uh, handle anything without interrupting the song too much.
know Brian McCune is in the, uh, the chat room, or was a few moments ago, so uh, he has not yet said that it's not okay to send his eyebrow out, so I um, have to assume that that's going to happen. Jason, surprised there. <laughs> Jason T. Stein says, My version of yellow always gives me 100% even though I suck. Why? I don't know. Uh, I don't really understand that question, but if you're having any problems with our games uh, or uh, note detection or it's just basically doing something strange that you don't understand, please do reach out to our support team. That's uh, support.ub.com. Uh, if there's any known issues with any songs or stuff, uh, they're going to be tracking them. They report them back to us. We then investigate them with bug tickets, things like that. But uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's just that's not enough information for me to go on, and this is not really the place to do live tech support anyway. So uh, drop it out to support.ruby.com. See if they can help you out. Z has won the raffle, which is great. He promises he will laminate the eyebrow. <laughs> Sect letter says, I hope he also wins the second eyebrow so he can make his guitar look surprised. Mechanical Tim points out that he already has a left eyebrow. Can he be certain he would get the right eyebrow if he would win? No, sorry, we cannot guarantee a left or right eyebrow. You simply get whichever eyebrow is available. Eyebrows are really in vogue these days, I noticed. Mm -hmm. Like all the modeling magazines and stuff, they have really thick eyebrows. I used to like fuck them like crazy in the 90s. Fashion smith. <laughs> Got to resolve yeah. it. Sure. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, pretty straightforward, yes. nice, yeah. even pace, something that you mm -hmm. can approach. Although, uh, apparently, I had a couple of surprise bass notes in there for you. What? I mean, I did okay. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, yeah, I think you did just fine, 99.6. <laughs> did you literally miss that one note when you went, uh-oh, something happened? No, no, I was a little, well, I got it, actually. I was just really surprised they did a sort of a chromatic um, oh. on, at the end of the chorus. They, they just sort of do a little chromatic fill thing. Yeah. Okay. I, I was like, oh, that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Anything yeah. else you want to add, Jason? Um, yeah, so I noticed before we started the stream that the intonation on one of the strings of this guitar was a little off. <laughs> so instead of playing it where the artist plays it on the ninth fret here, I decided to take it all the way up here because the intonation was slightly better and I knew that it would pass detection more with... We, that's it, that proves that you need to be in tune and your instrument needs to be up yes. to snuff in order for Rocksmith to hear you. So if you decide to bypass the tuner and then you, you're pl kind of playing at your own risk. Right. So... <laughs> but, but you just but transposed you also, live. I, yeah, I just yeah, I just switched That's it over kind of and was just reading. And, and, and I mean, it's it, it's 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 luckily it's a, a, a fairly easily attainable pattern that wasn't too much of a difference to shift it up a couple frets and down a string or up a string, depending on how you like to count. I have a question for both of you from SMN Books. Mm -hmm. he wants to know if uh, if working on Rocksmith has improved you as a player on a personal level. Absolutely, you're just saying that because you don't get fired. No, no, it's no, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely true. Because I, I didn't, I didn't learn. It, it, it gave me a whole different way of learning things. Like I, I used to learn by by writing stuff, um, and I didn't really, um, you know, go through and you know annotations and things and learn mm -hmm. other people's songs. But by learning other people's songs, I improved my own playing and gave me new ideas for things for my own writing and things like that. All right, all right, yeah. we'll renew your contract. It's cool. <laughs> I don't have a contract. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well then get back to work. <laughs> I would, uh, I would say that um, m maybe not necessarily playing guitar itself, 
but certainly I, I have transcribed music for a long time, but, but really doing it every single day mm -hmm. at this job for six years, you, you, your ears do improve after, after a time, just keep, you know, if you just keep feeding them with notes and eventually like things that you might not have heard before become clearer faster. Mm -hmm. so Do you know how many songs you have note tracked? Yeah, Brian McCune told yes. me the other day. I don't remember. It's I think it's it, it's in like 180 something. It is 180. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's something you have like transcribed that. 180 songs for Rocksmith. So, I'm glad to hear that it taught you something. It taught, yeah. <laughs> there, there, there was some benefit to that. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I know it's it, it's a it, it's a, 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 a significant number. Cool. I think. It's, yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, that's the perfect segue for me to say, you know, you never know. Everybody learns something different from Rocksmith. For instance, let's look at our friend Tim. Tim learned something from Rocksmith. He played a whole bunch of other instruments, and uh, when he decided to... Uh, oh, are you, oh, are you guys ready to do Freeze Frame 2? Uh, <laughs> when uh, Tim, Tim Porter, our friend from Dublin, Ireland, uh, let us know that, uh, that Rocksmith was useful to him when we were looking for some folks to uh, come out to our uh, Rocksmith Live at Slim's event for our fifth anniversary back in October. And uh, Tim, uh, Tim bit off quite a bit for that show. He decided to sing and play bass on a Rush song along with two other songs. So uh, what will Rocksmith teach you? I don't know. But here's what it taught Tim while we talk about Tim. Uh, and we swap in some new players. We will give away five DLC codes for six uh, Coldplay songs to each person. So if you, uh, we're going to have five winners for the next raffle. Follow UB Vertigo's advice on how to enter this contest. And uh, perhaps you will end this uh, stream today with some free Coldplay DLC. Uh, some of you will anyway, and that's cool. So take a look at this, and we'll be back. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> My name is Tim Porter and I live in Dublin, Ireland. I'm 23 years old and I'm having a, a bit of a Rocksmith experience it seems. And I'm currently in Fantasy Studios in California. It's all amazing and beautiful and gorgeous and American. <laughs> <laughs> Winning a competition of this grand a scale is, is pretty big. I've not been flown anywhere ever in my entire life for anything like this. So trying to come to terms with it, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty chill most of the time, so I, I don't get in my head about an awful lot of stuff a lot of the time. But preparing for the, the show and everything, uh, I, was, I was working very, very hard. Playing Rocksmith, it, it's a beautiful interface, and it's, it's fun. You, like, you see all the pretty lights and stuff. And there are other challenges, like score attack and stuff, like, I'm gonna beat my high score, you know? It's a very interactive way to practice. Like, Practicing has always been a chore. Like, I've played music almost my entire life, and practicing was just the thing I didn't want to do, you know? I've played piano, and I've played tin whistle and a few traditional Irish pieces, but the expression that you can get out of a guitar through the bending of the strings and through the equipment and all of this amazing technology and input has been put into making this instrument as beautiful and wonderful as it is, you know? And it is a facility for me to express my musicianship as efficiently as possible. I am so excited, <laughs> like crazy over the moon, excited about this. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and it's gonna be interesting, and it's gonna be intense. It's gonna be so good. Rehearsal and sound check. Uh, they went pretty well, I think. Uh, I'm getting more and more confident with, with the band and the guys, because they are excellent. They are just the absolute best guys. They're so happy to kind of have me here and I'm so happy to be playing with them. So being on stage, even without a crowd, is a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> I'm uh, typically not the most confident person. I, I have a bit of a persona that I can do, but you know, having the other guys on the stage is, is great and being able to play off them. I think the most nervous I was was yesterday like evening, but I think I'm just settling into it really, really well. Like it's all made easy by everybody around me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Timothy Porter.
adrenaline. <laughs> Even coming up the stage, saying hi to everyone, saying bye to everyone, saying thanks to everyone. Jeez, like, oh, I'm, I'm still buzzing. Dude, this is, this is fantastic. Like, beyond fantastic. Oh, thank you so much for, for watching Rocksmith, all that jazz, amazing. Yes. <laughs>
I call it the, the stuff that you would sing in the shower arrangement, <laughs> like when you think of the melody of the song. It's actually carried by several different instruments. Like I really like this string part. Of yeah, it's, it's tasteful. Lol Wutmang says, can we have Anthony be the next Rocksmith voice guy? He has a nice and pleasant voice, and the Rocksmith uh-huh. guy sounds, sounds like a sarcastic meanie pants. Well, thank you. <laughs> Why do you think I'm posting this shit? That's, that's, I just, the whole thing was to pitch, have me be the next box. <laughs> um, one of my favorite games from the 90s. That's how old I am. When you were a zygote out there, I was playing video golf. Uh, and Lynx Pro for the Mac had the strangest narration I've ever seen. An alternate golf announcer was Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that tone. Yeah. That was pretty good. <laughs> you can do better, though. Oh my god. I don't do a very good Bobcat Goldfinger voice, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, the chat agrees. Hypersonic says it's tasty. And uh, our friend Squirrely Ninja, who you know is Chris Wheel, he comes on and plays string sometimes. He said, sounds really nice on guitar. That arrangement just. It's a, it's a good tone and keeps moving. It's nice. Artificial01 says, Hey Dan, any way to show lyrics and score attack? That's not the point, score attack. The lyrics are provided in Learn a Song as sort of a courtesy for people that might want to sing along. And you can plug in a USB microphone and sing along. You won't get scored but you'll get amplified. Um, that's actually been in there since Rocksmith 1. I don't think a lot of people realize that. Uh, but no, Score Attack is really there for the competitive player uh, who's really just focused on the notes, so decided to uh, not include them there and clean up the interface a bit. Nice arrangement, man. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I like what you did with that song. <laughs> hey. But it, it's not, I see what you mean when you when you talked about the layers. Like right. more yeah. instruments come in mm-hmm. to sort of take over different parts of the melody. And right. It just kind of feels like they're all flying in and sort of sharing that. But it creates a very nice full song from a pretty straightforward and simple melody. Right. It's mm-hmm. one of those tunes like the more you listen to it, the the more little subtle things that you hear within that that just kind of come in out of nowhere and you're like oh i never noticed that little mm-hmm. part before and so it's yeah I, l- cool. l- one of the things i like about uh, the rhythm arrangements is uh, something you mentioned earlier um how players just get to work on the same chord progressions over and over again so that they can play a song that's very familiar and and might be one of their favorite uh you know cold play pieces it's it's really cool to get that practice in and to to play along with something you know mm-hmm. yeah and, and that's what i found actually with this entire pack you yeah. know it's pretty accessible right yeah and they're very recognizable songs i mean Absolutely. you may not recognize some of these from their titles necessarily but you will you will almost certainly recognize the melodies or the hooks or the choruses uh, you know, it's, it's it's not the kind of thing where you go, oh, I remember that solo. This is really just not one of those bands that does flashy solos. It's much more about building that song and uh, and putting it out there. But but they they definitely they are things that you have heard out yeah. there on the radio. You've heard them on TV. You've heard them you know on on shows and stuff. So yeah, I, I was talking to Shane about this pack before he went back on tour. That rock star. I know. Um, and we were just talking about how well produced all of these songs are. Yeah. And, and um, how how there are so many hooks uh, within each song. You know, whether it be um, 
uh, through the vocals or through um, you know strings or guitar, it, it, there are recognizable pieces that end up making the whole, and it's yeah, man, it's a lot of fun. Right, it's cool. All right, we're gonna do some Q and A. This is the point where you get a chance uh. to ask real live developers real live questions. Uh, so uh, start putting them in the <clears throat> chat now. I did see one a little bit earlier on from uh, Quit Kiss My Sweet Axe. Uh, That's awesome. who asked, That's <laughs> how can I buy Rocksmith picks? Now, uh, we show these, uh, we give some away every week, uh, but you cannot buy them. The only place that we have them is here. We just get them for promotional purposes. Uh, we have talked to the UB Workshop about maybe offering some Rocksmith accessories, but so far it hasn't happened. Uh, UB Workshop makes really nice stuff like uh, replica weapons from Assassin's Creed and uh, really cool like hoodies and some you know some cosplay elements and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, nothing on Rocksmith yet, so therefore we have nothing to uh, to offer you. Just uh, yeah, keep trying to win. Uh, it's the only place we do them. And uh, when we run out of colors, I then pick a different color uh, of the picks so that you know there's a sense of oh they don't make those anymore. Like we used to have black and gold Rocksmith picks, we don't have those anymore. Uh, and uh, now we're on to red and white. And uh, I, when, I, when I ordered them, somebody was like, well, that's not on brand. I'm like, shut up. I want red and white picks to give away on the stream. And it's my budget, so I'm doing it. And they're like, okay, fine. You know, so the, once the red and white, I may never be allowed to do red and white picks again. So uh, What will Dan <laughs> pick next? Exactly. Who knows? <laughs> Um, all right, so let me take a peek and see uh, what folks are saying. There's still many eyebrow references. Brian McCune has not said definitively that we're not allowed to give away his eyebrows, so I have to assume <laughs> that we may be able to give away one eyebrow in each uh, section. Um, let me see. Uh, <laughs> All-Star Sniper 32 recognizes you from earlier streams, Anthony. And uh, Anthony is very diligent about warming up before you play. He's, he's the one who's kind of got good... <laughs> Uh, hand stretching exercises and things like that. Guitar yoga. Yes. Uh, All Star Sniper Thirty Two uh, still wants to know Anthony's leg exercises for playing while standing up. <laughs> do you do leg exercises for uh, when you play when standing up? Or, uh, do you stretch those quads? You know, sort of that, pull that stuff. That's really. I, I actually do that every morning and every night before <laughs> I go to bed. I'm not kidding. I, honest. Yeah. Wow. That's. But I don't really do that before I go on stage. Weird. Maybe you should. I touch my toes every morning just because uh, I can, basically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I made that's that's actually helped me a lot. Once you know, just sort of like mm -hmm. ah, I know, so now I can go down to like you know my knuckles or something like yeah. that. I'm like ah, I feel good. Yeah. And that you know, I, I do try to be healthy though. Um, yeah, I know that's the problem, man. It, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it helps with uh, stage performance uh, definitely, especially if you're playing a long gig. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, Burn one two one uh, asks if we guys are, uh, are are we close to the flood? So you may have heard that after five years of drought, California has gotten about three weeks of heavy rain, and uh, here in Northern California, it's actually overflowing and uh, causing a pretty serious flood situation where a hundred thousand people had to be evacuated. That's that is uh, close, but not too close to us. It's a bit further north, so uh, I don't believe that we're in any imminent danger. Although. Being in a major city, there's weird stuff happening all the time. Yesterday, a building under construction here in San Francisco almost had a 2,000-ton piece of concrete fall off of the 46th floor of a skyscraper that was being built. So that made getting home, for me, a little bit more difficult. I took a different way to BART last night because ev all the streets were roped off. I don't yeah. know if you got uh, around that or if you managed to sneak in through. Well, I got in a bit earlier yesterday, so I was able to leave oh, good for right you. at 5. And I, I got to a couple of detours, but I had enough time to walk right. around. It wasn't going to make me late, but no one was at the BART station. It was yeah. kind of great. <laughs> yeah, I had my, my bicycle, and I'm just walking my bike, and I just didn't bother to take my bike helmet off, and yeah. I passed a police officer who was there sort of, you know, trying to make sure that people weren't in the areas that they had deemed dangerous. Yeah. He's like, good thing you got that helmet, man. And I just, because <laughs> I'm like, are we really that much of danger? Like, I don't, if 2,000 tons of concrete falls on my head, I don't think that a, a $100 bike helmet, no matter how cool it is, is going to uh, to help. Um Oh, uh, uh, Lal Wattmang would like to hear your uh, your audition. Could you do needs more work in your Rocksmith guy voice? Oh shoot, um, needs more work. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, no, that encourages me. By the way, I did want to point out that you got a hundred percent on bass. I don't know if you noticed. I did. You you got a hundred percent on no, uh, on bass on Viva. So that's uh, I, I that's thought excellent. I, I hit a late note uh, somewhere in there. I missed one, but uh, I was seeing things. 
Oh, here's another question that Shu can't answer. Uh, DGM86 <laughs> asks, who chose the songs of this pack? Was it the Rocksmith team or the record label? You actually work with our music licensing team. W- do you want to basically explain how we submit our songs and say this is what we'd like? And the, These were actually requested by um, Rocksmith players. We have a request app. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the link for it, but uh, if not, I'm, I'm, I, something tells me it will magically appear now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, this is worth clarifying because I think uh, a lot of times on Facebook I'll see uh-huh. people say, uh, you should get like every song by this artist. And of course, that's not the way that it works. Mm-hmm. We use the request app to prioritize what we think people would be most excited to see in the game. Yeah. Uh, so that helps us know, okay, well, you know, like a lot of people want this song. Fewer people want that song, but we know that it's kind of like a big song for super fans of the band, so mm-hmm. that might be worth asking for. And mm-hmm. then we put in a batch of individual songs and ask... Uh, could we clear the licenses for all of these songs? And we don't always get everything that we ask for. Yeah, yeah. But in this case, we got six songs out of the batch that we had asked for, which is pretty good odds, frankly. Um, and yeah, it's it's not a blanket. Just give us whatever you got. We have to be specific about the songs. But the songs came from the request app of prioritizing. Exactly. Yeah, we set aside personal preference and you know try to. That's the other thing. I think a lot of yeah. people assume that we're just going. You know what my favorite song is? I'm gonna put that in the game. And it's really not the it way that it works. It would be a different catalog. <laughs> it would be a very different catalog. I will tell you that even since I've started working here, I will go to the request app and put songs in <laughs> that I would like to see in. Yeah. I sit next to Brian McCune, but I have. No influence, and I'll have even less influence after I shave off his eyebrows, but uh, it really <laughs> isn't a question of, you guys don't like my favorite band. No, there's a really good chance that whatever your favorite band is, we've heard of it, we like it, we appreciate oh, it, absolutely. we respect it, and we may have even already requested it. But the process exactly. is much longer and more difficult than that. Mm-hmm. You can go to bit.ly slash rsprocess, all lowercase, and that will explain some of the hurdles that we wind up with. It's basically, that document tells you what happens after you request a song, and maybe why it wouldn't happen right away or might, mm-hmm. it might take a, a long time for those to clear, things like that. You obviously cannot say anything, but you just came off of a call with our licensing team. Mm-hmm. Our weekly licensing call yeah. happens right before this. Did we get more clearances this week? Yes, no. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So that means that more songs are coming to Rocksmith. Yeah. So, Which means we'll you know be able to give you uh, more of what you've been requesting. This yeah. is always a plus. Yes, we, we certainly try. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stevens Alt asks if Clock has Clocks has been included and transcribed, which it is. It's one of the songs we're not playing this week, but it is in the Coldplay six pack. Uh, <laughs> can we expect other piano driven songs in Rocksmith? This is a good one because they're certainly not off the table. Yeah, they're not off the table yeah. at all. Uh, since I got here, Brian McCune has often brought up piano based songs and said, oh, this would work so well on guitar and I can hear the arrangement in my head. Yeah. I really want to do this, even though we're talking about material that is strongly either piano or keyboard synthesizer based. Uh, obviously, I, I like to say this all the time, the guitar can do anything. The guitar is an extremely yeah. flexible instrument with a very wide tonal range. There's no reason a piano song can't be arranged for a guitar. We saw that with My Immortal. Yes, very much. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Evanescence pack that just mm-hmm. uh, was just out uh, a little while ago. So yes, there are piano, primarily thought of piano songs mm-hmm. uh, in our library. We're not opposed to it. We'll continue doing them. If it seems like it's something that can teach you something valuable right. about music or guitar or technique or whatever, or if it's just something like we, again, people request piano-based songs through our request app. Mm-hmm. So sure, we listen to that. Hey, I love this song. I want to learn how to play it on guitar. It doesn't matter that it was originally done on a different instrument. It mm-hmm. matters that they love the song and they want to learn how to play it because yeah. it means something to them. I, I feel like the uh, the Boxsmith packs also uh, speaks to that type of arrangement. Yes. You know, I, I think they're good examples of... Um, I heard a rumor that electric guitar was not actually invented by Beethoven. And so therefore he didn't know what? how well some of that stuff would work. Like Ode to Joy, he would have done it on a Stratocaster if only he had a Stratocaster, <laughs> but he didn't. And Stradivarius, that's it. That's all he had available to him. <laughs> uh, let's see one more dumb joke. Maybe not even one more dumb joke. Uh, so, yeah, let's leave it at that. If you have more questions, uh, by all means, reach out to us yeah. and uh, let us know. 
uh, at uh, Twitter. You can go to Twitter at Rocksmith Game. If you specifically want to ask something to one of the, the developers, if you want to see uh, if you can actually make Brian Shu talk on camera during our Q&A section, uh, send that to Ubisoft Studio SF. Uh, and if you go to at Ubisoft Studio SF on Twitter, tomorrow we'll actually be giving away more Coldplay codes for Steam. So if you didn't win in today's half-point uh, giveaway, don't worry. You will have another opportunity. Super cool. Uh, thank you both very much thank you. for playing. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, get ready to do our last song with, and in case you missed it, uh, as some of you have been noticing, we are gearing up to uh, hit a major milestone in our Rocksmith Library, 1,000 playable songs, which is super great. Uh, we're very, very happy about that. That combines all the songs from Rocksmith 1 as well as all the songs from Rocksmith 2014. Uh, that you can currently play. There are a few oddball songs. You ask our hardcore fans uh, if they, you know, well, what happened to these things? We did a few freebies here and there uh, that uh, are no longer available, but we're going to hit a thousand playable songs uh, sometime in the middle of March, if, uh, if my math is correct. And if my math is not correct, you can bet that the Riff Repeaters Toy Machine SH will make sure that the math is correct. So, um... In that thousand song library, we're finding out that one of the biggest problems is that people don't even know some of the great music we have. Like, for instance, if you are enjoying this week's Coldplay, uh, you might also enjoy Oasis and U2. We have packs for both of these these bands, two five packs. These are available now. You can buy the entire pack or you can buy individual singles, just the songs that inspire you. That's Okie Doke. So go to your uh, your shop for Rocksmith or go to your platform. Uh, you know, you can go straight to the Xbox Marketplace. You can go straight to the PlayStation Store or to the Steam interface. Uh, they all have search functions. Just type in the name of the song that you want and Rocksmith. Uh, and if it's in there, it'll it should pop up just fine. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're liking the the approach that Coldplay takes to music, more of a a, a pop and a melodic thing, uh, more than a, like a hard rock or a heavy metal, we certainly have plenty of that. Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Pantera, you name it. Uh, we've got an awful lot of uh, heavier music. But if this is the kind of stuff that really makes you want to pick up a guitar and, and learn how to play, uh, by all means, dig into some of our other stuff, including Oasis and YouTube, available now in the Rocksmith Library. Uh, just some of the opportunities. So uh, uh, if you are just tuning in, boy, you're late, but you have, not, uh, you have not missed the final giveaway. We have another giveaway from our friends at Ernie Ball coming up. It's not this beautiful Caprice bass, sorry. Uh, but we will be giving away some Ernie Ball accessories, some strings, some peg winders, a strap, some fun stuff that uh, wherever you are on your guitar journey, you can probably use it. Uh, we all lose picks. We all can use a spare strap. So we'll be doing that after we play this song, which is going to be our last one, note-tracked by... Brian Pody, off of the Wheels of Steel. Hi, Brian Pody. Hi, Dan. Have you figured out a way to get a pinch harmonic into Fix You without ruining this beautiful, beautiful song? I ruin everything. Brian Pody does ruin everything. But for this one, you actually built it. We would not have Fix You if it were not for you <laughs> creating true. the note track. Um, anything, any words of wisdom, pearls of wisdom that uh, come to mind for this particular song? I don't know if I have any wisdom, per <laughs> se. <laughs> okay. Um, it. It is an interesting song, though, if you want to talk about the different arrangements. Um, the the rhythm arrangement is representative of what's actually on the record mm -hmm. and what they would actually play live. And it's in a really odd tuning. There are several really odd tunings on the rhythm paths of this mm -hmm. whole pack. Yeah. What is the odd tuning here? The guitar player likes weird tunings. It's E, A, B... So Not D, your, your so D down, to, down B. to B, G B E flat. That is odd. Mm -hmm. Why would a Why would a person stray from E standard and cause our audience so much grief? Probably because he's playing in the key that the pianist wants to play in. Okay, that's a fair point. Because one of the questions that we get when we do alternate tunings or custom tunings, uh, people say, you know, why Why don't you just make everything E standard? Well, some things can't be played. Uh, correctly, unless they're in the original tuning. Mm -hmm. But also, we do strive for authenticity. If these guys are studying a song and they see that a, a player has played it in a specific tuning, they're going to preserve that tuning because we know that there's a certain amount of, like, wow, I'm doing it exactly the way that my hero is doing it or the person yeah. that, that created this music is doing it. Yeah, and if you want it to sound just like the record, that's the way you have yeah. to do it. And a lot of people do. I mean, that's feedback that we get. Yeah, I, I want it to be as authentic as possible. So that's one arrangement, but then you also have alternate arrangements that might be a little bit easier to play. Right, so then there's two lead arrangements that are just kind of slight variations of one another. Um, 
I think I'm going to play the representative lead <laughs> unless anyone wants to argue with me about no, it. No, you can do the representative lead. Um, and Paul Cross actually threw his hat in the ring for this one. Our oh, yeah? director of creative Everything, design. yeah. Yes, he's yeah. our director of creative design for, uh, for Studio SF as a whole. So he, he had some ideas for this song. He, he really wanted it to build at the end. Because when they play this song live towards the end of the song, oh, all yeah. these fireworks go off, and it's this huge, crazy light show. So he wanted this arrangement to kind of represent that. So we tried to really make it build towards the end. Okay. So that's fun. And I I have a soft spot for this song. This was one of those songs that you know sometimes you hear a song and it's associated with an event or a movie or something, and then that's what sticks with you. Uh, at, when I was back in the magazine biz, uh, many of the people at that publishing company decided to do the uh, the AIDS bike ride between San Francisco huh? and L.A. Major, like everybody trained for it. It's a it's a huge undertaking. You you bicycle like hundreds of miles. And when they did their post-game video of showing everybody, you know, uh, training and the montage and everything, they did it to this song. And so it always has a, a soft spot. So when I was like, oh, can I play bass on Fix You? And I was surprised that it moves around as much as it does. Uh, it's not a complicated song, but it is constantly moving, and you will have to constantly pay attention. And I was surprised to find that he plays it with a pick. So I'm going to play it oh. with a pick. Mm. I didn't when I practiced it, but I did pretty well in practice. So uh-huh. That's... Kind of the other interesting thing, the the bass player plays it in E standard live, mm-hmm. um, but there are some low E flats on the record. I don't know if he was playing five string. Could be. Or if he tuned down, but live, he definitely plays it in standard tuning every time. So I did the arrangement in standard tuning. And I will play it in standard tuning. This is Fix You from Coldplay. Our fourth, but uh, not all of the, <laughs> there it is, six songs uh, from uh, from this week's Coldplay pack. We're just going to do a quick tune-up. You should always do this, especially please notice that we have uh, we have changed instruments a bit as well. Uh, normally, we would uh, we would recalibrate, but I'm not going to bother uh, this time because it looks like everything is in order. Uh, do, do, in fact, let the game uh, uh, adjust your tuning, check your tuning. Uh, if you're not in tune. Then uh, the game will not uh, note, give you credit for what you're doing right if you're not in tune. Actually, I haven't heard this arrangement. That's what's oh, yeah. said. And for a long time, I thought this song was called Lights because that's what leads off the chorus uh, lyrically. And I'm like, oh no, it's what it ends with. better than I am. <laughs> That's a matter of opinion. 
Well, there's an innate skill that you have as a player that I am still building with Rocksmith. <laughs> Inappropriate trill, five yards. Is it time? Oh, it's your guitar. I see what you mean about the building towards the end, the arrangement, you made it more complex and fuller. Wow, you can you can hold it. I still don't understand why that's played with a pick. It specifically said bass pick. He plays it with a pick. Yeah, but it, it's not the. It, it's funny. Generally, the slower, the more tender songs, I, I expect a finger style, but um, he plays it with a pick. So why not? Uh, that song deserved better than my bass performance on it. I'm not unhappy with 97.1. Exemplary but, performance. But I I still think that I could have probably nailed that one if I had played it more than once before the stream. Uh, I do a lot of very busy things. It's it's hard work yelling at the internet, Pody. I, I have no idea. So. Um, anything else you want to add, or should we do that final giveaway and uh, get this show on the road? You know, I think people should wait. Oh, okay. okay. Well, then let's talk about uh, meaningless things and unrelated topics. That's what I'm here for. Um, can you help hold Brian down while I shave his eyebrow? Oh, sure. Okay, cool. Hey, let's give away that Ernie Ball stuff now. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going for that. Everything you see here is going to go home with somebody. We gave one of these away earlier in the show, and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, they sent us enough to send a second one. So if you would like to win this, follow the instructions of UB Vertigo. He is our community manager, and he's hanging out right now in the chat room, and he'll tell you what you need to do to enter the uh, random drawing. Uh, one person will win everything you see here. A brand new strap. Right now, those straps are uh, bright white until they run out. Uh, Ernie Ball likes to switch up the colors on us. And I'm okay with that because it's free. And I just say, whatever you guys have a lot of, send us those. That's cool. Uh, and they're nice enough to do that. They throw in a peg winder. And if you don't have a peg winder, these are handy. Uh, they don't last forever, so sometimes it's good to have a spare one around, even if you already have one. It makes changing those strings, and you will get a set of regular slinky strings, uh, so much easier. Just a, a little crank uh, is is all you need to make your strings change way, way easier. Uh, plus, uh, regular slinky bass strings as well. Those are the uh, 50 to 105s. And uh, Ernie Ball Wonder Wipes. This is a system for keeping your guitar shiny and polished and new. Clean your strings and they will last longer. Moisturize your fretboard and your guitar will feel better. And of course, polish it and keep all that gunk off. Uh, do not eat Cheetos and then immediately play guitar. But if you do, if you're in that terrible habit, 
everything bad that you do to the guitar can be wiped away with one little sampler pack of Wonder Wipes. So give that a shot. Also, a dozen picks from Ernie Ball. They're always good to have on you. Always good to offer to a friend who might be missing a pick. Uh, and, you know, you never know. Uh, they get lost. You, you swallow them. They go behind the couch, under the table. Doesn't matter. Uh, have a few extras. But keep ours really, like, I saw somebody frame the three Rocksmith picks that we send out. I'm still super impressed by that. I cannot imagine... Um, that uh, somebody would value them that highly, but somebody did. Uh, you are free to play with them. They are medium gauge picks for anyone uh, wondering. Uh, but all of that can be yours if you win the Ernie Ball prize pack that we're giving away now. Follow UB Vertigo's advice on what to do to enter, and uh, I will uh, send it out the pack as soon as I get all of your information. Uh, from UB Vertigo. So please do include your name, your address, and your phone number. We won't keep that information. We don't add you to any databases. We don't want to send you junk mail or call you during dinner. Uh, that is just so that the mailroom has the information to get the package to you. Were something to go wrong, the package delivery service would want to call the recipient, not us. We don't want them sending it back to us. If something's wrong, if there's a typo, or if they can't find your house, they're more likely to say, where is it that you live again? And then the nice person shows up and gives you the package. So that's all. That's the only reason we ask for your phone number. Don't freak out about it. Uh, that's pretty much it for this week. As I mentioned, uh, we're late for a meeting by about 10 minutes, so we're going to go. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We do this every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. GMT. Please do tell your friends. We have enough prizes to go around. Uh, we have some fun stuff coming up next week for DLC. Uh, I am happy to say that this is a tag team puzzle between uh, Rolling Stone 222 from our forums and myself. He said, I don't know, I like this idea, but I don't know if it's difficult enough. I said, you need to make a puzzle more difficult. You have called the right man. So I made the puzzle more difficult. I hope you enjoy that. You can look for that tomorrow at the Rocksmith.com forums. Look in the DLC section, and our friend Yubi Vertigo will post a clue that says clue for... Uh, for DLC for 221. So uh, next weekend's deal, or next week's DLC will be out on Tuesday. You can find out some early advanced information tomorrow and get confirmation on uh, at least one of the songs, I believe, uh, in tomorrow's puzzle. So uh, show up at rocksmith.com tomorrow. Check that out and hang out with the rest of the community that's going to be there uh, solving the puzzle as well. Uh, and as I mentioned, if you did not win a DLC code in uh, this week's stream, uh, don't worry, tomorrow we'll be giving away five codes on the Twitter account for at Ubisoft Studio SF. We will also drop a few in Reddit, but uh, they go fast, and then once they go, the moderators hide that topic again. So you may not realize that we've even given them away if you weren't there right at the right time. Uh, and we also tend to sprinkle a few through those same forums. So if you, uh, if you find that you uh, are helping... Uh, conversation and being a useful person, that's generally where we drop the codes or in the, in the more positive themed uh, uh, conversations where people are being polite and helping each other and having good discussions. So all that free stuff can be yours uh, and we wish you a very happy weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, some of you, including us, I just found out I have Monday off. I didn't know that, <laughs> which can only mean one thing. I have to do a hell of a lot more work before I leave the office on Friday <laughs> because there ain't no such thing as a day off in Rocksmith, not with new DLC every week. So we will leave you with another look at the Coldplay DLC. Six songs this week. Thanks for joining us for the four that we were here uh, to play. Uh, we will uh, leave you with that trailer and uh, see you later. Bye, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this week and hope you enjoy this DLC uh, on whatever level it, uh, it offers you. You never, ever want to log, uh, like lock out a learning opportunity, and Coldplay may be that opportunity for you. See you next week. Bye, everybody.
shattered windows and the sound of drums. People couldn't believe what I've become. Revolutionaries wait for my head on a silver plate, just a puppet on a lonely string. Or who would ever want to be king? I hear Jerusalem bells ringing, Roman cavalry choirs are singing. Be my mirror, my sword and shield, my missionary. Thank you. 